Okay. So I, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Christina Wan for really being very supportive and the School of Oriental and African Studies for hosting us here today, which is the first stop of the traveling exhibition of Hibla. And I would really like to thank Dr. Anna Labrador and Director Jeremy Barnes of the National Museum, without whom I could not realize my vision of having the Hibla Permanent Textile Gallery in the Philippines. For those who are not from the Philippines, for those who have not visited the Permanent Textile Gallery, I think it's about time you come home and see what the National Museum looks now, from the National Museum of Anthropology to the Museum of Natural History and the Museum of Fine Arts. It's completely different. And we're very proud to have the first permanent textile gallery in the Philippines in the Museum of Anthropology. Almost the whole floor with the Baibayin and the basketry exhibit and the biodiversity and climate change. And as Dr. Ana Labrador has mentioned, we just opened the Hibla Gallery in the Vegan Museum, which used to be the provincial jail. And soon will rise the Kiangan Hibla Gallery, the Butuan Hibla Gallery, Iloilo City, and Zamboanga as well. And we decided that London will be the first stop of the Hibla uh, traveling exhibition. And as early as now, there are other posts asking for the Hibla to be brought. And I think um, Lisboa, Lisbon will be next. Berlin also, there's a great possibility since we have textiles in the Berlin Ethnological Museum where national hero Dr. Jose Rizal had collected textiles more than a century ago. And um, the collection of Dr. Rizal will be brought back to the Philippines in a few years, which Dr. Rabador is also helping coordinate uh, with us. So let me now proceed which, with um, what I'm supposed to speak about, and that's a, uh, the Pina said of weaving and embroidery in the Philippines, just an introduction to this. We know that traditional textiles are really ties that bind. It links the past to the present and brings together cultures which, no matter how diverse, has a commonality. Traditional textiles bring together industries, communities, and people. A fabric or a garment is a synergy among workers and artisans. It is a product of diligence, hard work, and passion. When you think about it, several hands are needed to make one fabric alone. For Pina, if the farmer is also the reaper, and the weaver is also the warper and the loom dresser, it will take at least four people, including the designer and the sewer, to bring Pina to fabric. For silk, at least eight to nine people are needed from farmer to fabric if all are within the same general location. For piña seda, that would be 12 people to produce the fabric, plus three for embroidery, including transport, two for designer, and sewer. This means that a hand-woven piña seda blouse with embroidery would entail at least 17 people to complete. You saw our embroiderers from Luban, Laguna. The textile, or the pineapple, that they are embroidering on came all the way from the Visayas in Panay Island, from Calibo Aklan, where Inja Legaspi, one of our lecturers, will speak later. And imagine that this textile is produced from the pineapple fruit, the red Spanish pineapple, which was farmed or produced or planted by farmers. Imagine the growing of the plant, the harvesting, and the whole process until it becomes fiber, then textile or fabric, then brought to Luzon for the embroiderers to do, and to the sewers for them to actually do into blouses or kaftans, whichever. According to the Philippine Textile Research Institute, or the PTRI, which is a government institution under the Department of Science and Technology, there are currently 1,277 weavers in the Philippines. 494 groups involved in the hand weaving sector. Imagine how many more families and communities we can support if we just continue to promote traditional textiles. Pineapple fiber is considered to be more delicate in texture than any other vegetable fiber. I think we can see this not just with a picture, but those who went to the Philippine Embassy 
And for those who have not, till November 22, it's there. You see how fine the pineapple fiber is. It is extracted from the leaves of the pineapple plant, particularly the red Spanish variety, which is leaves that yield excellent fibers for hand weaving. The pineapple plant is not indigenous to the Philippines. It is believed that the Spaniards brought the plant to our shores. The beginning of pineapple cultivation in the Philippines also marked the start of the craft of piña cloth weaving in the country. Hand-woven piña cloth with intricate embroidery was greatly prized then. In the 1860s, many European royalties received gifts of piña cloth originating from the Philippines from loyal subjects to commemorate momentous occasions. In fact, as I mentioned yesterday, Dr. Adolf Bastian, the German founder of the Berlin Ethnological Museum, was a friend of Dr. Jose Rizal, our national hero. And he was gifted by something worn by these ladies in the picture. And those are stored in the Ethno Museum in Berlin, which hopefully will be brought to the Philippines in a few years' time. The eventual influx of cheaper and important machine-woven fabrics and foreign influence on Philippine fashion resulted in the decline of the piña cloth production, which is actually very laborious, as you can see, and a time-consuming <clears throat> method. In a bid to revive the industry, government and private sector implemented the pilot production of piña fiber and cloth in the province of Aklan, in Chaligaspi knows this very well, in 1989. India is that, no, that is Lahir Minya, that is not yours, but that's your neighbor, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was there since 89, and that's also when I knew India, actually much earlier than that, I would go to your silong and buy, right, mm -hmm. under your house. Aklan has been known as the center of piña fiber and cloth production since the red Spanish variety is mainly found in the island of Panay. But there were also efforts to propagate piña fiber and cloth production in other provinces such as Antique, Guimaras, Capiz, which are all in the Panay Island, and Palawan, Negros Oriental, and La Union. La Union is in uh, Region 1 in Luzon. Production in Capiz, Negros Oriental, and La Union ceased for various reasons but it has made considerable progress in Palawan. In terms of decorticated piña fiber, production is mainly in Camarines Norte, in the Bicol region, and very limited quantities in Cavite and in Rizal. Based on 2014 statistics, there are 2,086 hectares of pineapple farms in Camarines Norte, 67 hectares in Palawan, 21 hectares in Aklan, three hectares in Antique, which are the sources of piña fiber. These farms employ 1,370 farmers. That was me 30 years ago <laughs> in a pineapple farm. I think that was uh, Aklan State College. We were together. Yes. That was the 1980s, no? Okay. When piña seda weaving was introduced in Aklan in 1998, customers preferred this over pure piña since piña seda, which in Legaspi actually started, is cheaper, but its beauty and texture is also at par with pure piña. The shift to piña seda from pure piña was caused by difficulties in the supply of red Spanish pineapple leaves, likely due to the shortage of knotters. Piña seda, or pineapple silk, is a hand-woven fabric made from hand-scraped piña fiber blended with silk to produce different textures and design. Aside from being lightweight, there you are, <coughs> India, I think this was after Typhoon Frank when I visited you. And you were devastated, we were devastated that many of your looms were actually inundated by the floods mm -hmm. and you showed me the textiles or the, uh, the, the cloths that you were able to save after that um, natural calamity. But India, just like the Brazilian Filipino, is able to bounce back. And then after Typhoon Frank, it was Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan. But then she's in London now and she will lecture you. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from being lightweight, the combined property of pineapple and silk makes the fabric not too stiff, 
compared to pure pineapple and a small body compared to pure silk. That is stronger than pure pineapple but three times cheaper, easier to weave due to the strength of silk. In terms of silk production, the Filfida or the Philippine Fiber Industry Development Authority which is a small government agency under the Department of Agriculture, spearheads the development of the silk industry with a joint cooperation of the PTRI, the City Culture Research and Development Institute of the Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University that is in um, La Union, and the University of the Philippines in Los Banos and other state universities and colleges. The silk industry is characterized by various activities such as silk work egg production, cocoon production, reading operation, weaving, and uh, made up goods manufacturing. Mulberry farming is important to silk production because silkworms feed solely on mulberry leaves. Majority of these farms are located in, again, Western Visayas, particularly in Negros Occidental. Meanwhile, cocoon producing provinces are not just in Negros, but also in La, La Union again, Benguet, that's in the Cordillera, and Ilocos Sur and Abra. This industry could actually provide much livelihood to many communities, but there has been a decrease in silk production in the Philippines. The production of dried cocoons went down from 9,000 kilos in 2003 to 3,000 kilos in 2012. There were only 150 hectares of mulberry plantation areas in 2014, compared to 300 hectares in 2005. And the production of raw silk went down from 1,500 kilos in 2005 to only 800 kilos in 2014. As you can see, Dr. Anna, there's much to say and much to be done. And I need you to be able to convince Filfida and PTRI to work harder and to plant more. In the past decade, the Philippines has been exporting an average of 25,000 square meters of silk fabric. But the last time it exported raw silk was in 2013. Only 10 kilos of raw silk to Luxembourg. There is actually a huge gap between demand and production of raw silk in the country. Filfida estimates that about 10 metric tons demand for raw silk in the country annually against the production in 2015 at only 0 0.425 metric tons, which is why we have to import an average of 13,227 kilos of raw silk, 12,000 300 kilos of silk yarn and 1.1 million square meters of silk fabrics annually. And due to the limited supply of raw silk, the supply of piña seda fabric also went down in the past decade from 57,804 meters in 2007 to 17,690 meters in 2016. Among the challenges in the production of piña seda are the limited supply of silk. So we need to plant more mulberry trees and encourage more silk farmers, as well as supply or manufacture of knotted pineapple fiber. We need knotters, right, India, and more red Spanish variety uh, plantations for pineapple. And of course, less number of weavers, because most of them want to go abroad to work, or perhaps work in offices or in call centers, <laughs> or uh, would rather not weave when they don't understand the importance of the legacy that they're bequeathing. In particular for silk production, the PTRI notes that there is no confidence in the profitability of silk culture and the lack of integration of the supply and value chain. Another concern is a lack of water during extreme heat or periods of drought. We can see the adverse impact of extreme weather events and climate change on the production of silk, of pineapple. In terms of piña fiber, 
the tedious process of hand scraping the fiber has led to limited production, the irregular demand for piña cloth due to its being a high-priced fabric because it's manual, is also a challenge in promoting its use, and also lack of capital to purchase raw materials, lack of looms, but this should not be lacking because the National Commission on Culture and other government agencies actually give away hand looms, upright looms, backstrap looms to our weavers, and other tools, and lack of trainings on weaving and product development. Are other constraints. But the local textile industry is continuously evolving and these challenges only encourage innovativeness among industry stakeholders. The City Culture Research and Development Institute in Baknotan, La Union, has established 44 City Culture Technology Demonstration techno demo farms in eight provinces mentioned there. A component of the program is a mulberry research and development which has helped boost the production of heavy leaf yielding mulberry trees. For piña fiber, there was a decline by 27.1% in production in 2016 from 7.95 metric tons in 2015. Piña fiber production in 2016 was a 5.79 metric tons. In a bid to increase production of pineapple fiber, the Department of Agriculture through Filfida has provided agricultural machineries to farmer cooperatives from different regions in the country that maintain large areas of pineapple plantation, especially in Mindanao. The machineries include multi-fiber decorticating machines, with safety mechanism, which are used to extract fibers from waste pineapple leaves left in the field after harvest, mechanical dryer to dry the fibers during rainy season, and the baling machine to prepare clean, inspected, and graded pineapple fibers ready to be traded to their intended buyers. And to ensure the sustainability of the local textile industry, there is a need for convergence among the agencies of government involved from the production of raw materials, to more trainings and workshops, to the provision of equipment and raw materials, product development and promotion programs, and a systematic marketing system. Filfida has programs for the development and adoption of technologies on the utilization of plant fibers and the improvement of post-harvest technologies on fiber extraction. It also establishes processing facilities and conducts product development. The PTRI provides technical training to weaving associations, <coughs> particularly on basic and advanced handloom weaving, natural dyeing, the provision of weave designs, and the response to technical services and short-term contract researches. It has identified areas in the Philippines as natural dye production hubs and natural dye satellite centers to be able to respond to the immediate needs of the weaving communities. The Department of Agriculture can also help in propagating pineapple and mulberry plantations to ensure the steady supply of piña and silk fibers. <coughs> the Department of Trade and Industry and its Center for International Trade Expositions and Missions, or CITEM, can help promote these local fabrics through trade fairs to showcase our products both locally and abroad. The Technical Education Skills Development Authority, or TESNA, can conduct skills training for weavers and embroiderers. Local government units must also support in creating a nurturing environment where the traditional textile industry can flourish. As chairperson of the Senate Committee on Finance, which reviews the Philippines' annual budget, I ensure that these programs are funded. The Hibla Traveling Exhibition is one way of showcasing the traditional textiles in the hope of further promoting what we would call, perhaps, an endangered or a dying industry. The National Museum has been very vigilant, a vigilant and collaborative partner. It has been a staunch partner in this endeavor. And the two main agencies that support our weavers 
and our textile industry, Filfida and PTRI, have budgets worth 358.4 million pesos and 79.8 million respectively. For 2018, and we are in the period of budgetary debates, it's still under review, Filfida has a proposed budget of 431.4 million and PTRI 83.2 million. I will actually reassess these funds and see if there are areas that still need to be covered, such as the support for the pineapple and mulberry farms. Over the years, we have provided support for programs that will help farmers, our weavers, our local textile manufacturers through additional funding in the national budget, such as the development of silk in the Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University in Bacnotan, La Union, the establishment of weaving and processing centers through Filfida, the provision of technical assistance for the textile industry, the establishment of natural dye centers, and the conduct of natural dye and weaving seminars and workshops, production support services including cotton development, and the establishment of cotton processing center, <coughs> among others. I believe this year we provided 100 million pesos through Filfida for the establishment or re-establishment of cotton farms in Pinili, Ilocos Norte, in Sarangani, in Mindanao, and other areas. Other PTRI, there is a textile science and technology services program for the testing of raw materials and allied products and the provision of technical assistance to the textile gardens and allied industries on textile processing and machinery utilization as well as a textile technology transfer program for the dissemination of textile information and the provision of documentation of services to textile millers and allied industries. Under another government agency, the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, we provide assistance to artisans, including weavers, through the provision of looms, threads, and materials for weaving. There's a little known law called the Philippine Tropical Fabrics Law, which I actually authored way back in 2003, when I was a first-term senator. And it intends to promote <coughs> Philippine tropical or indigenous fabrics to the use of such materials for the official uniforms of government officials and employees, and in so doing, to support the local fiber industry. It stipulates the wearing of Philippine tropical fabrics with 5% fiber content of abaca, banana, pineapple, and 15% silk. The strengthening of the local tropical fabrics industry is attuned to our advocacy of promoting sustainable development and preserving our rich heritage. It will also provide jobs, especially for those in the countryside, it really unlocks the creativity of the Filipino, which is actually overflowing. The Philippine Pina Seda textile has great potential in the world market. We can make it prized items even here in Europe, as it has been in the past centuries, because the quality of our handwoven fabrics with intricate embroidery, such as the beautiful shawl worn by Anna and by India, is truly world class, and I hope through the Hibla traveling exhibition we can generate more interest and support for a dying industry. In closing, I wish to borrow the words of Dr. Michael Tan, Chancellor of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and it just came out in the Inquirer today, entitled Weaving a Nation, and I quote, we need to create spaces for an entire line of Filipino products from textiles to the apparel itself and its accessories. It has to be a line that taps local materials and designs to give it added value for local as well as international markets. Successful business models are about tapping into an existing demand, adding value and creating new niches in the market. Clothes are second skin, and in developing a local textile and clothing industry, we weave a greater sense of being Filipino. I thank you very much for your attention.